You're watching. You're watching. You're watching. You're watching West Hartford. West Hartford Community Television. Community Television. Community Television. For the community. 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 By the community. By the community. By the community. By the community. For the community. By the community. And it's a wrap. Hello, my name is Cole Lean, and today this is Sports Analyst, Analytics, and I'm here with Evan Exum. So the first topic we're going to be talking about today is um, how many more championships will the Warriors win? As of now, I think the Warriors are going to win three to five more rings, because right now the way the rosters are set up, it looks like the Warriors are the best team in the league for like the next three to five years, if I had to make a guess, because the, cause if the Cavs, they because like to get over the hump, to get closer to the Warriors, you have to add someone like a Paul George type player and trade Kevin Love. And they need a new bench, and they need to get some. They, they need to get more talent because there is no way with the same team they have now they're going to get past the Golden State Warriors. So, are you saying three to five more rings without a loss, or are you saying three to five rings just in general? Because they they have the potential to go three or five rings in a row, undefeated, no losses, nothing. But are you saying that, or are you just saying three to five more rings in the next you know, couple of years, maybe taking a loss, or maybe not even making it one year? Well, I'm saying for the next seven years, they'll win three or five more rings, if I had to say, because that team has too much talent. And this team is arguably the best team of all time. So... That kind of flows into one of our later questions, but I mean, we'll bring that up later. So, do you think this team, I mean, in the playoffs, they have obviously um, shown to be better with Kevin Durant, but in the regular season, there was a lot of, you know, criticism about the um, Durant, um, you know, the acquiring of Kevin Durant. Um, how do you feel about the Warriors now um, with Kevin Durant on their team? They're a better team with Kevin Durant by far during the playoffs, like I say. I, and I say they can be better without them. I think they could have won the finals, to be honest, without Kevin Durant. Really? That's interesting because, I mean, you know, like I said, in the season, I really, you know, the, you can just see by the Warriors' record, the team wasn't as good. They didn't have as many wins. But in the playoffs, when that type of stuff is out, I think they really, you know, Kevin Durant really – lifted the team. That's why he got the finals MVP, because he lifted the team. And I mean, I think they, yeah, they would have been able to beat the Cavs still, but it could have been a lot closer. It could have gone to game seven without Kevin Durant. Well, I'd say the Warriors won in seven without Kevin Durant, but there's no question that he's the second best player in the game, and he's one of the greatest players of all time. Kevin Durant is on another level. Yeah, he is. Our next question. Um, will this finals loss um, enhance LeBron's legacy. I say it does because he averaged because he became the first player to average a triple double during the finals. He's the best player in the game, and any team you put LeBron on, your team is guaranteed to be a con con contender. Without him on a lot of teams, your team will be average. Like imagine LeBron if he got drafted by the Spurs. Spurs, how good he, how much rings he he would have by now, learning from Tim Duncan and Greg Popovich. Well, I mean, I mean, you're right about that. LeBron is a caliber player that you can put on any team in the association and have their record change immediately just with him being there. But with that being said, LeBron's legacy really to me, I mean, he proved himself last year. That was the proving point. That was the pinnacle of his career when he led the team to come back from the 3-1 to one lead. And so that does put him in conversation as one of the greatest players of all time. But this loss this year, I mean, besides the triple doubles, you know, in the last game, he wasn't really there. You know, he, he, he did too much taking over and not enough getting other people involved. That's probably why they lost game five. Because Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love, Tristan Thompson, they weren't firing on all cylinders. And I think part of that was due to the fact that LeBron wanted to take over the game. I get what you're saying because 
LeBron, like, I know that he's not the best at taking over games. Like, he's not good at taking over games. Yeah. And, like, LeBron, like, he needs to take over games and take more shots than Kyrie Irving. Because in the finals, Kyrie Irving took 123 shots and LeBron took 117 shots. LeBron has to take 104 shots during the finals. Yeah. Because LeBron, the, the, team he, the team he plays on, they need him more than the Warriors need Kevin Durant. LeBron needs to play an A game to beat the Warriors. And Kevin Durant can play a C game to beat the Cavs. Yeah. That, that, that is exactly true. And yeah. Le- All right. LeBron, like, I was want to say that that LeBron, like, in my opinion, is a Mount Rush Rushmore player. LeBron just has LeBron to be honest. Like, if I had one series to win, of course I'm taking Kobe, Jordan, Bird, Bird over LeBron. If I had one series to win, if I had to start a team for 82 games, I'm taking LeBron over anybody to start yeah. a team for 82 games. Oh yeah, yeah. LeBron, LeBron is you know, despite some injuries, despite different setbacks, he's still proven to be great every year, always in contention for the MVP. I mean, even this year with Russell Westbrook, James Harden, all these guys doing amazing things, he's, he was still in the MVP race at his age. And he's been playing the game for a long time, yet he's still dominating. So, um, you know, that can't be undervalued. The only big loss on LeBron legacy, I say that is so much a big deal, is the 2011 finals, because that was an ugly one. Yeah, I mean, those finals, you know, that, that was at a period of LeBron's career where his, his critics were at its highest point. You know, the critics were always firing on him, first for joining the big three, then for blowing it against Dallas Mavericks in 2011. So that was a time where LeBron's legacy wasn't looking too clean. Now, you know, they wouldn't have been able to predict him leading, going back to the Cavs and leading the Cavs after, um, after being defeated by the Warriors to a win, um, being down one to three. So, I mean, you know, amazing. All right, so our next topic, um, we're going to talk about could LeBron ever surpass Michael Jordan? How do you feel about that? I say no. The only way that he could surpass him is if he beats the Warriors twice during the finals, which is, like, impossible to do. But if he does, he's, like, if he, next, if he gets four rings, he is back in the conversation if he beats the Warriors. But if he gets five, it's very debatable to know it if he's the best player of all time because I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan and my mom's and my and my mom my aunt and my grandpa they're huge UNC fans and Michael Jordan fans and I have family from North Carolina and Michael Jordan I say he's the best player of all time because he took over games the, the killer and the willingness to win and the competitive spirit and the IQ during a seven game series I take him over anybody he's the best player of all time um well I mean if you're talking about statistics you know LeBron's overall statistics, he's more of an all-around player than Jordan. Jordan was a a scorer who could play very, very good defense, and he actually could pass the ball. But LeBron, you know, LeBron's passing is on another level than Jordan's. So, I mean, if you're talking about stats, LeBron has better all-around stats. But if you're just talking about flat-out killer instincts and scoring ability and when to take over the game, then Michael Jordan has that in LeBron landslide. Like I said, the only way LeBron would be able to um, surpass Jordan or even have the, you know, be in that conversation is that he has to beat this Warriors again. So he has to beat the Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. He has to beat these Warriors. And I think, I mean, you know, maybe one more MVP. And, you know, um, just lead his team to another good record and keep on being consistent. That's how he's going to be able to do it. Yeah, like I got... I got no doubts in LeBron James, him being an all-time great player yeah. and, like, falling off a cliff for, like, any time soon because he puts in so much work. He's very com- com- competitive, plays like a professional every night. The only thing that lacks him is his killer instincts because there are times when he doesn't take over games, which he has to still work on. I mean, that's not his natural game, to be honest. His natural game is to be a team player. It's like a Magic Johnson type player. In my opinion, in my opinion, I say LeBron's the best team player of all time over Magic Johnson. Really? Well, it's interesting because Magic was more team than LeBron. Like LeBron has figured out to give himself a little niche in the middle, in between Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, right? Because Magic Johnson, he might give you 20 points, but he he could give you. I mean, there's some games where he got 20 assists. You know, so he was more passing. LeBron might give you 30 points or 28 points, 29 points, maybe seven assists. And Michael Jordan might give you 33 points and maybe five assists. So, like, you see, 
there's, you know, there's an extreme scoring, extreme passing, and then there's LeBron who's in the middle. So when you're saying about you know, greatest team player, greatest all-around player, you could make that argument, but I still think Magic has it in the end just because how he, I mean, he made players better. He totally upgraded players like Byron Scott, Michael Cooper, who would be, you know, good, solid all-around players, but whose stats look great because they're getting, you know, no-look passes for easy layups and dunks from Magic Johnson that they wouldn't have had on, on any other team. I understand 100% what you're saying. Magic's the best passer of all time, yeah. but I say LeBron's the best team player of all time. If I had to take someone, like, on the worst team in the league, I'm taking LeBron over Magic on the worst team in the league. Really? Like, I'd take LeBron over anyone on the worst team in the league. Yeah, I, I, I think I might have to do that, too. If you had to put LeBron James on the Brooklyn Nets, right? I mean, you know, they're, they're the worst, they have the worst record. Right? Yeah. They, they, so if you had to put LeBron James on the Brooklyn Nets, the Brooklyn Nets would immediately become a playoff team. If you had to put Magic Johnson on the Brooklyn Nets, the Brooklyn Nets would be close to the playoffs. I don't think they'd be in the playoffs. They would be close to the playoffs. I mean, I, I, I think they make it or get the nine seed. Yeah. But I give him credit where creditors do because yeah. Magic made everybody around him oh, yeah, better. And there'll never be a passer like him in my lifetime like at 6'9". I mean, Ben Simmons being compared to him, but I have to see it first because he hasn't played one NBA game yeah. yet even. He hasn't played. All right, so our final topic for today. Um, could the 17 Warriors beat the 96 Bulls? I think absolutely. I say, I, I, say, I say yes. Even when I'm a big... Jordan fan and and like I have feeling from North Carolina who are big Michael Jordan's fans, I say that this Warriors team could beat the ninety six Bulls because the matchup versus Ron Harper on Steph, Steph Curry. Curry, Steph like will do a damage. Annihilate him. Clay on Michael Jordan. I know Jordan could lock down Clay and win that matchup like any sec second of the game, except for he'll have one bad night during a series. But Durant would Sky Pippen, I know that Bulls team was the best, I say is arguably the best defensive team of all time because yeah. I say that Guy Pippen, I'm not going to lie, I'm, I'll be the first one to ever say that I think he's, he's the best perimeter defender of all time, and I think that he could guard Kevin Durant and hold him to 28 points and oh, not yeah. 30. Like, I'll give him that much credit. And I think that for the – like at the four, Draymond versus Dennis Rodman, like I know Rodman cannot score, but the defense and everything, I think that would be a big problem for him. But I mean, let's put it this way, right? Durant – if you go by overall matchups, both Curry and Durant would have somewhat breaks on defense because Scottie Pippen, I mean, Scottie Pippen can score, but he's not, you know, they're not calling an ISO for Scottie Pippen to really score off the dribble. You know, that's really, that's mostly for Michael Jordan. And then for Ron Harper, Steph Curry doesn't have to worry about that either. Klay Thompson's going to have to work on defense. So Curry and Durant have energy. And then Draymond, who's guarding Dennis Rodman, also doesn't really have to work on defense because Rodman isn't really an offensive player. Then when you go to offense, Steph Curry has the advantage. Klay Thompson, however, unfortunately is being guarded by Michael Jordan. And that's, you know, I mean, I feel bad for him there because he's not going to get a lot of shots off. And Kevin Durant's being guarded by Scottie Pippen. You know, even though Kevin Durant is just an absolutely amazing scorer, Scottie Pippen is, even a, is an even better defender. So, you know, that, I mean, you know, Kevin Durant's still going to get his 20, but it's not going to be... 40, 30, like it was before. I say the Warriors, they were one in six because, like, at the five, I know today's game, the five is not big. There's not yeah. really, like, a center in today's game. But, like, Iggy coming off the bench to stretch the floor, like, yeah. and Steve Kerr coming, coming Draymond, off the bench. Draymond, you got Draymond. And Steve Kerr to come off the bench. I got, like, Iggy making an impact in, in that kind of game oh, yeah. because Iggy could play, and he's the sixth man of the year, I think, that he deserves because he brings so much energy to that team, and he's a vet, like, and, and scored 20 points per game in Philly. He, bring, he brings firepower to the team from that wasn't seen before, and he is, is consistent, and he brings a whole, you know, when the Warriors are in a low, you know, he might make a three, he might make a crossover to a nice pass or a dunk or do something that will get the game moving and get the team moving. So he's a very valuable player in this finals. Like, the MVP of that series, I think, would be Durant. Yeah. But the only... But, like, I think Steph would play better in that finals than this, than this finals. Oh, yeah, because he's got a better matchup. Be Karan Harper, like, cannot guard Steph. Karan Harper, and yeah. I know that games I, – I think most games would be, like, a physical game. I'll give them credit, but most games would, would be a physical game, but the Warriors have too much firepower. Yeah. But I think the best matchup for the Warriors that could arguably beat them is the AD Lakers, to be, on, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Even with Magic, because that team was a fast-paced paced team, and they were long and athletic. So, I think, like, a starting five of – of Magic, Byron Scott, at the three was James Worthy, 
Number four was AC Green, and, and at the five was Kareem. Yeah. Like, I think that, like, Kareem, like, that, that versus Kareem and Draymond would be a big problem for them. Oh, yeah. Because in that game, the way Magic Johnson played, they were scoring 120 points per game on hand-checking rules in a physical game. So that, I think... Yeah, without hand-checks, the game would, you know... I think the AD Lakers could beat them three out of two times if they played seven-game series for that long. Because scoring 120 points per game, like, off the hand-checking rules, the amount of points the Warriors are scoring now is, is insane. Because imagine how many points they, they would score in this game with the soft ways yeah. game where you always get a call for a foul. And Kareem, like, at the five, being able to shoot free throws will make a difference. Yeah. Well, I think we've covered all of our topics for today. And um, thank you. Oh, last Roger. question. Uh, all right, last question. The 80 Lakers, let's say, like, five times during the finals, the 80 Lakers and this Warriors team win. Who do you think is a better team? Like, let's say the 80 Lakers played the this Warriors team, like, Five times during during the finals, what team be better out five times during the finals? So you're saying best out of five, yeah. 88 Lakers, just because they you know will continue to run, continue to run, not get tired, and the Warriors can get into lulls. I mean, you've seen Steph Curry in previous finals; he has been subpar. You don't know how it's going to be. You know, I mean, Kevin Durant is their, and Klay Thompson I think are their consistent runs, but Michael Cooper can guard Klay Thompson. Or Kevin Durant and shut them down, because and and I feel like nobody's going to guard Magic or Kareem. So I think the Lakers really bring it in the end. You know, I think I might give the Warriors two wins, give the Lakers three, and um, that would be the best. Because they didn't shoot threes back then a lot, but they could adjust the three ball. Yeah. All right. So I think that's it. Not seeing you. All right.